We're here to talk about important cards you need to play around in Arena. Cards mentioned in this video are all commonly seen cards that should warp how you draft and play the game. In Arena, you can't play around every card, and this video is meant to improve your consistency by playing around popular cards. In this light, we'll also avoid talking about Druid and Warrior cards since you barely see those two classes in Arena right now. If you really want to know certain cards for these classes, comment below. Without further ado, let's get started. Currently, the best control class is Warlock. There are a ton of impactful removals, and you need to keep these cards in mind. The first card is Abyssal Enforcer. Going into turn 7, this is the card to play around. Trade your minions that have 3 health or less, and avoid playing small minions. Abyssal Enforcer is not only the strongest card in Warlock's arsenal, but it's also the most common. Dread Infernal is the next popular Warlock card. Dragon Moss Scorcher may be gone for now, but Warlock still has 1 damage AoE on turn 6. Admittedly, this card is much less common now than before, but it's still a premium minion given its ability to counter Eccentric Scribe's Death Rattle. Warlock has tons of board clears in general, however spells like Hellfire and Fellfire Potion aren't as common when it causes so much self-damage. Fellfire Potion is still a premium card because you often can't play around it. Not many minions have 6 or more health to begin with, and the best way to beat Warlock is still to put on a lot of early game pressure. One interesting card we'll note is Darkshire Councilman. This card can easily snowball out of control on turn 3, so you have to curve as early as turn 2 to prevent the Councilman from growing out of control. The next best control class is Mage. Since Classic, Flamestrike was the premium board clear Mage had, and now it's more common than the last meta. Meteor is rotated out of Arena, so Flamestrike is often the best pick in the top bucket. Added to that, you are no longer guaranteed rare cards, and above which increases the rate of common cards even further. At high winds, you're going to see Blizzard and Volcanic Potion more commonly, so playing around 2 damage board clears is reasonable if you can afford to. In terms of secrets, the most common is Mirror Entity, followed by Duplicate. Counterspell is a rare secret, which appears much less frequently. One Rise of Shadows card to keep in mind is Conjurer's Calling. This card allows weak bodies such as Bomb Squad and Big Time Racketeer to get a massive tempo swing if left alive for a turn. Similarly, if a mage can value trade the minion, Conjurer's Calling also provides massive swings as well. Oftentimes, you can't really do anything against the card, which is why it was recently moved from the 6th bucket to the top bucket. Next up, we have Priest. Unlike Mage and Warlock, the only common board clear for Priest is Holy Nova. Dragonfire Potion is the best board clear in Antwood's arsenal, but it shows up infrequently. Priest is strong as a class to play on the board than off the board, which means a double-sided board clear is less likely to be seen in a strong Priest deck. What Priest is known for is Shadowward Death and Shadowward Pain. Both cards are offered at a really high frequency, and you can expect Priests at high winds to carry them. Oftentimes it's better to try and bait a priest by playing a slightly weaker minion if you can afford to, such as playing a Blackwalled Pixie before a Water Elemental. Potion of Madness and Shadow Madness also offer insane amount of swing, but they're properly bucketed for the most part. If an opponent skips a turn by not spending any mana, they likely have a strong swing card like Shadow Madness. Now, we're not going to advise playing around the card at all times, but you definitely don't want to give your opponent a powerful card like Bronze Herald. Likewise, playing around Cabal Shadow Priest on turn 6 at high winds will be important since she offers such a strong tempo swing if she goes off. Paladin is less about specific cards, but a general mindset. Paladin buffs minions, so leaving a minion up can be punishing. Multiple cards give divine shields, like Argent Protector, Grime Street Protector, Hand of Protection. The general principle is to keep the Paladin's board empty. Sometimes when you're winning by a lot, you can avoid the 1-1s one and go face. Paladin lost Dino Size and Spike Ridge Steed, so buffs are a bit less swingy. The key turns are on turn 4 and turn 8. Turn 4 is when you see Blessing of Kings, and turn 8 is when you see Silver Sword. Sound the Bells is also a common buff spell, and it's most likely to happen on even turns past turn 6. Other than buff spells, Paladin secrets are somewhat tricky to play around. The most common secrets are Avenge and Noble Sacrifice, and rarely would you see a Redemption or Repentance. Repentance is definitely strong enough that you should play a weaker minion first, but if you really have to get something on board, take the risk, since Avenge is by far the most commonly drafted secret. For Hunters, two general principles apply. Always kill beasts, and their 1-1 tokens can kill something big with Hunter's Mark. Other than that, the most impactful spell they have right now is Mark Shot and Unleash the Hounds. In general, Hunters can deal with singular targets relatively easily, but have problems with wider boards. 
Unleash the Hound can clear 1-1s one in a pinch, but is often used to push face damage toward the end. In terms of secrets, only two stand out. If you only have a big minion, be patient and summon some small minions to attack first to play around Freezing Trap. If you have a bunch of small minions, be patient and summon some big minions first to play around Explosive Trap. Now, Shaman feels a lot similar to Paladin. Because Evolve and Master of Evolution exists now, you want to prevent Shaman from value trading so clearing their board is usually helpful. A card like Nerubian Prophet needs to be killed ASAP to avoid evolving into a powerful 7-drop. Keep in mind that if they had a card in their hand for a while, it can very well be Hagatha's Scheme, which can clear a whole board. Spell Damage Totem should also be killed on a general principle due to playing around Lightning Storm. Other than spells, it's important to know Walking Fountain is their common card right now. On turn 8, Shaman can heal for 8 and deal 8 damage to your board. Lastly, Bloodlust is a key card in Shaman that can steal wins out of nowhere. This is why it's important to fight for the board and keep their board contained. Sometimes leaving one or two minions is okay, leaving three non-totem minions can be problematic. The final class to talk about is Rogue. Recently, Rogue was the most powerful class in the first week of Rise of Shadows, and the class was recently adjusted to lower their power level. There are two class identities when it comes to Rogue. It's the only class with a bunch of spells to remove large threats, and it seeks to control the board very early with cheap tempo tools. One of the strongest swing cards for Rogue is Betrayal. For two mana, it can deal a lot of damage if you place your strongest minion in the middle. In this scenario, Betrayal deals six damage as it killed both Blink Foxes and the Rogue gained an insane amount of tempo. The defining card released in Rise of Shadows is Evil Miscreant. When a Rogue goes second, coining out an Evil Miscreant is ridiculously difficult to deal with. The Rogue gains tempo and value all at once. The recent arena update has lowered the appearance of Evil Miscreant and we were told that it'd be rebucketed later on. This card is really powerful and there really isn't a good way to play around it. We hope after this update, Rogue goes back to its natural identity as we described earlier. It's a class that usually can't win a value game, needs to take risks to edge out on tempo. We'll end our list of key cards to the neutrals. The most common card right now is Burly Shovel Fist. We already talked about it in our past videos, but how do you play around a 9 mana 9 9 rush? Starts with drafting. Big taunts like Furious Etten and Bog Creeper were good cards before the expansion and become so much worse due to Shovel Fist. While there's still premium cards to play on turn 7, you should still be drafting less of those cards because of how cleanly it dies to Shovel Fist. Instead, you want good taunts that come down earlier like Sludge Belcher and Proud Defender. Divine Shield minions like Dollar and Crusader and Sunwalker are also pretty strong to trade back into Shovel Fist if needed. The next impactful neutral is Hench Clan Hogsteed. This minion single-handedly warps the meta by making 2 mana 3-2s worse than 2-3s. Coining out a 3-2 feels real bad when it dies to Hogsteed, so you want to avoid making this play in this meta. In a similar vein, Flightmaster also makes 2-3s better due to its ability to summon a 2-2 Griffin. The 2-3 body you can value trade into the 2-2, and the Flightmaster will give you more tempo early on. The last neutral we'll highlight is Eccentric Scribe and Haunted Creeper. There really isn't a good way to play around overstatted death rattle minions, but small board clears that deal 1 damage are really, really good in this meta. Other than these death rattle minions, lackeys are also very common minions right now that'll spread the board further. 1 damage board clears like Dread Infernal, Twilight Flamecaller, and to a lesser extent Unleash the Hounds are premium cards you should pick to gain an edge. And this wraps up our video on key cards to play around in the first rotation of Rise of Shadows. What cards have we missed? What do you play around? Leave a comment below. As always, like and subscribe for more quality Hearthstone content. See you next time.